Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffleslandrayboots.com and today I have a reader question, how do you piece together fur with hot glue? So if you would like to learn how, just boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here crafting with me. So I am going to be making an adorable little gnome with cute details like pom-poms and very shiny, sparkly things. Uh, but what we're really focusing on is I wanted to take any fur that you had and you can be able to use it for any gnome. And you can see we're covering up this join. So I'm going to be using a sweater and a paper mache cone that's almost 11 inches, but you can use anything you want. A sock gnome, a cone gnome, a sewn gnome, whatever. This works on any method with fleece, with fur, um, or I'm sorry, with fleece or felt as your base with the sweater, it doesn't matter, but basically you're just gonna take any fur you have. You can combine colors this way. Um, you can use the long pile fur. Now the ribbon is a little bit uh, less quality than even the craft fur, so I would say if you're gonna try the ribbon, you're gonna maybe in for a little bit of frustration. But I do have a craft coming up with that ribbon soon. So I'm going to be using the sweater sleeve, but if yours scrunches up or spreads out the fabric too thin, go ahead and cut two triangles out of the waistband and that can be your hat. So for the sweater sleeve, we're just going to measure what we want. Okay, so I have a pretty tall cone gnome, but I want it to flop over. So I'm going to show you the method I'm using. Works for any size cone, including a uh, tomato cage. So even if you go that large, I like keeping the seam of the sweater and that's because it's going to give me stability to my hat. There's going to be no stuffing here. And all I'm going to do is go about two inches above that ribbing for where I'm going to place it on, you know, the face. And then I'm going to go all the way up into a semi triangle. That's it. That's all we're doing. This is not, you know, a, a detailed thing. If you want, you can take this to the sewing machine and sew it, or you can use hot glue. Here I'm using a Sherbonder detail tip glue gun with Sherbonder glue sticks. I get asked that a lot, so I'm just gonna share it with you whether you want it to know or not. All right, so we're gonna set that aside and move over to our fur. I get asked a lot about fur in different colors and textures and sizes of pile. I got this from fabric.com. You can get a 10 by 10 inch swatch for about three bucks. So we're going to make sure the pile is pointed down and we're going to wrap it around the widest part of our no, whatever body style you have. You see mine has a big old triangle cut out the back after I get back into frame here because I'm a professional. <laughs> okay, so you see this big triangle? That doesn't bother me. I'm gonna teach you how to make a piece that fits here perfectly and is seamless. So I measured, I want a three and a half tiny, or drop, and I'm just making tiny cuts. If you are new to fur uh, cutting, just go ahead and use your ruler and just use a pencil and make a nice big long line. All we're going to do is use an X-Acto knife or a box cut or something, razor blade, to only cut the fabric backing. Now, if you cut fur with scissors and you cut the fabric backing, you're golden. It takes more time, so I don't do it. I use an X-Acto knife. I did give the lint roll uh, or the fur a lint roll. Now I'm going to show you I'm putting the seam side so that we can know exactly where this join is. I'm going to put the seam side in the pretty part okay in the front that doesn't have the join so that you can you know you can see there's no trickery here. And by the way, this is a real time crafting video because again, I don't want you to think oh it's edited and you know well it's not edited. I do this all the time. No one is the wiser. So all we're doing is basically matching up the bottom of the fabric of the fur with the bottom of my cone. If you don't like it where the fur splays out on the table, you're going to raise the fabric backing as high as the pile of the fur. If you do that, either paint the cone or make sure your body is the same color uh, because it will show through. All right, so you can see now, if I just put it down here, woohoo, it nice splays out. I like that look. But I have two things going on, a big hole in the back, and uh, the top is all scrunched up. That's okay, we're gonna cover that, so just hot glue that bad boy down. Now, if you want, you can cut a trapezoid. I'm lazy, and this was supposed to be a 15 minute craft, so. All right, so you can see, I'm just gonna move the fur out of the way. And then I'm gonna take a piece of paper, and I'm going to color in the hole. Now, I'm gonna make sure I line up and get uh, the 
actual marks where the fur starts. And then I'm gonna cut a little tiny buffer, maybe an eighth of an inch. And I know it's gonna be too big for the hole, Sarah, and that's what we want. Make sure your fabric uh, pile is again facing down and then don't put the triangle upside down, which I've done before. Take a pen and go exactly along your template outside. You don't have to add anything here. This is going to be perfectly sized. Okay, this is a great method for when you are putting together the same color of fur. Okay, so I'm just going to do the exact same thing I did with the bigger piece, use my X-Acto knife and just cut that fabric backing. Now you'll see I have a little problem right here. I got this string uh, from the fabric, so I gotta cut that off and then just rip it off. There you go. Now I have a little bit of extra. We're gonna use that extra, because we can. And now it's time for the moment of truth. You see? We're gonna pull all of our fur away, even on the other side, so we're gonna push that other fur out of the way. You can tape it down. I use masking tape if I'm using something really long. But you see right here, we're actually gonna put a channel of glue right next to the where the other fabric stopped, and we're going to vertically place this fabric into that glue channel. So watch what I do. I'm gonna make sure the fur is out of the way, and then I'm going to set that fabric vertically into the glue push it right up next to the other fabric backing, making sure I can't go any further along that cone. All right, we're just gonna let that sit for just a second so where the hot glue dries. I'm in the basement and it's winter, so that takes like four seconds, but I'm worrying with that little piece of string. <laughs> okay, for the other side, you're gonna do the exact same thing. It's a little trickier, right? Cause you can't go vertically, but you're going to put glue all along this little channel here. And then you're going to tuck down that fur fabric backing right into and right up next to the other side. Now, when you're mixing colors and stuff like that, you actually have to go under it for a nice clean seam. But you can see, I get my brush and then I find out I forgot to do the very, very tip. So you see it right there. And we wanna make sure this, you can't find this, right? We wanna to work to find that seam. So we gotta make sure that tip is tucked down as well. Same thing, I got a pencil because I'm lazy, but you should probably use like a skewer or your fingernail uh, just so you don't transfer any lead color. All right, so now that that's down, give it a brushing again and let's see. I know how it turns out, so. <laughs> but big reveal, bum, 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 bum. It looks seamless. Now I'm gonna show you up close because there's the seam, so in the back here, there's the seam, so in the back, is what we did. I'm gonna show you up close here. This is what it looks like, just like normal. And then this is what that seam looks like when you pull it apart. So you cannot find this if you do this correctly. All right, so that's my big tip. Now you're just gonna make sure you glue down the very bottom edge of all of this. For, it, it's, it's really fun for people, whether you sell them or you're just you, it's a lot of fun for people to play with the fur, give them boops on the noses, pick them up by the hat. So we wanna make sure that we get this all solid. All right, so we're just going to turn the hat right side out, making sure we poke out that little tip and pull all of our seams if you used hot glue. If you didn't use hot glue, pull your seams anyway, roll that seam in between your hands so, or in between your fingers so you can make it sit flat. So we're gonna slip this hat on out. I'm always a fan of putting the two seams because now we have two. We have the original sweater sleeve and we have the new one we created. I put those seams on the side. And then what I'm going to do is I made mine so that I could flop down this edge right over the second seam. See that? And the reason I did that is because I don't like looking at the seam. Okay, so we're going to now make a little tiny pom-pom with this little piece here of extra. <laughs> and just cut a small square. I think mine's about one inch. It doesn't have to be big. For, this is a probably three inch pile fur from fabric.com in a very pale pink. It's a really pretty color actually. And then now I'm just gonna make sure I don't have any fluff coming off and then I'm gonna glue all the corners into the center. That's it. And if you have a little ugly join in the middle like let's say you used a trapezoid shape instead of a square. Don't worry, it still works. If you use a circle, don't worry, it still works. This is a great idea if you have scraps of faux fur and don't wanna make eyebrows or something. So the ugly part's gonna be glued, but I'm not gonna do that yet. First, I'm going to split the fur to its fabric backings so that I can make 
the glue stick to that fabric instead of the glue sticking to the fur. For the nose, I'm just using a one inch wood round because this is supposed to be a very quick project for me. I'm doing this in between two other projects. Uh, so now I'm slipping off the hat and the reason is, is because I'm gonna glue the hat directly down onto the cone so that people can pick it up and not slip it off. But I don't want any part of that hat in the front to touch until I have it down. So you can see I'm actually pulling, my hand is up under there, holding the hat away from the glue. And that's just because I want it to only glue down where I want the hat to be, you know, after I've adjusted it. All right, and then I'm just gonna put a little glue on the top of the nose, lift up the sides and glue the cone to the hat not gluing the hat to the fur, which is how you can add those little glamorous disco balls that we're gonna add later. <laughs> which made this not a 15 minute craft. That's the only part of this video I'm going to edit because I'm horrible at hand sewing, but it turned out super cute and like a little glamorous gnome. Okay, so you can see here, I'm going to now glue down this part, not all the way down yet, because I want to be able to attach that pom-pom exactly the way I want it. So I'm just gonna glue down everything except the last couple inches or so. Just hold that there a sec while it dries. And now I'm going to glue down the pom-pom. So I'm gonna put a little glue down here and the ugly side goes into that glue. So now all they see is a pretty pom pom. And now I'm gonna glue down the rest of it. I like to make sure the hat is secure because everybody picks up gnomes by the hat. Even if you say don't pick the gnome up by the hat. Okay, so now if you really wanna add a good bit of time to this craft, I'm gonna show you how. I have these little disco ball beads that I've had in my craft stash since probably 2001. I tied on a same pale pink thread and then all I did is I went underneath because remember we haven't sewn or glued down this hat to the beard. So we have the ability to hang things off of it and that's exactly what I'm doing. Going in through the back, I'm measuring it down and then I'm just going to make two little knots right under like two sets of the stitches in this sweater. You, you cannot see them, right? That's the idea is that they're totally hidden. And because we're using the same color thread as the beard, um, you can't see them hanging down the beard. They just look like they're these little, like, again, disco balls hanging out in the beard. So I did this a few times. All I'm gonna do is just put that right back through exactly where I started or like right next to where I started and then cut that off as close to the hat as I could. As I struggle here, I told you this was real time, struggling with that needle. And then I just repeated that four or five times around um, the entire hat and I varied the length. Okay, and then also because again, I have a billion of these beads and I have a whole hat, I did the same thing and I attached them around the hat in a few, you know, six or eight places. It gives it a nice little sparkle. It just reminds me of like something really glamorous because I'm not very glamorous. I don't know if you know that about me. I'm pretty low key. All right, so I just did that again, like I said, in multiple places, cutting off the thread as close to the hat as I possibly could. And again, just repeating it all over. And then you're done. That's it, quick and easy. Boop. What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section. Have you pieced together faux fur? Coming soon is going to be another style where you're piecing together different colors of faux fur. As always, thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun.